and welcome back today i have a new video finally and it's going to be another entry related video today's video is going to be the singapore university hall guide so besides NTU, I will also be touching a bit on NUS which is the National University of Singapore and is the other university in Singapore that actually offers hall or hostel stay. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because I have received quite a lot of Instagram DMs as well as comments on my hall tour video commenting and asking questions about hall. And I'm sure all of you out there might have a lot of FAQs and I know for sure that when I first went into university or when I was applying for university, I really wish a video like this existed because there were a lot of questions that I didn't know who to ask and I didn't know any like seniors in uni as well. So I just hope that this video will be a useful one for you guys. And so I'm going to try my best to divide it into sections and I'll link them in the description box below as well as some links to um, NTU and NUS official websites about hall as well as some other personal accounts or personal YouTube um, vlogs that I've seen out there that I think might be helpful. Alright, so it's going to be quite a lengthy video so without further ado, let's get started. First of all, type of residences. So for NTU, it's very simple. We only have one type which are the halls. And as of this year, we have a total of 22 halls and they're pretty evenly spread across the whole of NTU because NTU is kind of like a circle and we have halls that are near to the spines with the soft spine and north spine that are near to your classes. We have halls that are next to faculties and we have halls on the other side of NTU. For NUS, on the other hand, there are two types of residences. So there are halls and there are residential colleges, which I'm going to call RC for short. So there are eight halls and five RCs. And for the halls, so the halls only have single rooms and all rooms have no aircon and for the residential colleges on the other hand they are mostly single rooms and most of them have aircon and some even have like this six bedroom sharing concept where six rooms kind of share the corner of the floor and it's kind of cordoned off so that six rooms share one toilet and how I know this is because when I went for NUS open house last year I actually got to go on a tour to see this six bedroom apartment. So cost. So cost is something I believe would be important to all of you out there as it was to me because I wanted to know how much I'll be paying for the hall stay. And so do take note for the prices, it's all on a monthly basis. So that means how much I'm going to pay for the hall per month as well as that they are in Sing dollars. Okay, so I'm just going to read out the prices that I found. So for NTU, the double non-aircon ranges from $255 to $295 per month. The double aircon ranges from $295 to $330 per month. The single non-aircon ranges from $375 to $405 per month. The single aircon ranges from $400 to $440 per month. For anywhere, the halls, the double non-aircon is $330 per month. The single non-aircon is $456 per month. Alright, so for RCs, the double non-aircon is $332 per month. Double aircon is $364 per month. Single non-aircon ranges from $476 to $512 per month. The single aircon ranges from $556 to $576 per month. And the single six bedroom apartment non-aircon is $556 per month. And the single six bedroom apartment aircon is $620 per month. Phew, so that was a huge mouthful, but I'm so glad we finally got the prices down. And so I hope we just give you a good general idea of how much a hall room can actually cost. And so now moving on to other costs that you know you might not have been aware of. So for both NTU and NUS, the aircon is a pay-as-you-use basis. So that means like when you're on aircon, you still have to pay for it. You're paying extra for an aircon in your room, but you have to pay still when you want to turn on the aircon. So for NTU, right, I'm not too sure about NUS, but NTU, we have this aircon card, and when we put the aircon card into this like meter, so it kind of like deducts about 0.02 cents per minute, I think. So, um, Overnight, I remember when I used to run my aircon, it would run up to $2 per night. So that means if I owned it for the whole week, I would spend about $10 per week on aircon. So per month, that's like $40 on aircon. 
So for NUS, there's actually something called meal plans and you have to pay for meal plans then they will feed you breakfast and dinner. So it's compulsory, so even if you don't want to eat the breakfast and dinner they provide, you still have to get a meal plan. And so a lot of my friends in NUS, they actually, if they don't eat, they actually invite friends over and give them their meal coupon so that they don't go to waste because after all they already paid for it. So the meal plan for halls is $102.72 per month and the meal plan for RCs is $204 per month. Alright, activities. So activities is something that a lot of people look forward to because both NUS and NTU offer so many activities and it's considered one of the important aspects of living in hall. And so it can be a little confusing so I'm going to try my best to break it down and I've broken it down into three sections. First of all, communities. So communities such as block communities, um, community service communities, freshman orientation planning communities. Second of all, sports. So sports like hockey, basketball, uh, you know, rugby, whatever you name, they probably have it. So NTU as a whole has its own like NTU basketball team, but each hall has its own basketball team as well. So sports is actually quite an uh, important part in halls as well because in NTU we kind of have an inter-hall sports competition every year and it can get very competitive especially like cheerleading. So cheerleading, we have a cheerleading competition which is super competitive. So besides sports, there are also recreational games such as Scrabble, chess, Chinese chess, darts, yeah. And there's also like inter-hall games for that as well. Then we have cultural activities such as dance. And two takes pride in the hall dance quite a lot because we have something called the Hall Olympian Closing Ceremony, which is a dance competition at the end of the inter sports, uh, the inter hall sports games, to kind of close off the whole like season. And halls get really competitive over the HOCC because everybody like wants to win it. So hall dance is something that's quite big in NTU but besides that, there are other cultural activities such as jam band uh, production. Each hall has their own theatre production as well. Alright, so some of you might ask why do I have to do activities and the whole reason is because we have something called the hall point system or the campus life participation. So both NTU and NUS have their own point system. The more points that you rack up, the higher the chance you have at staying hall the next year. So for me, when I got into NTU last year, we were actually offered a guaranteed two-year stay. But for previous batches, they actually had to rack up points in order to stay the second year. So for example, if you join a committee, and the committee usually gives about 7 points if I'm not wrong, and so you get 7 points. But if you want to join a subcommittee, you can get 5 points. But the thing is, if you join a committee as well as a subcommittee, you're only going to take the highest point so the 7 points, not 7 plus 5. For NTU, we also have something called distance points. Because NTU is located in the west, so depending on how far away you stay from NTU, the more points you get. So the points can actually range from I think 3 to like 7 or 9. So if you live all the way in the east, you're going to get more points. It's kind of like a way of telling you like, oh you stay really far, you deserve to stay in hall more. Moving on, we have culture, and the reason why I included this section is because whenever a friend asks me how's hall like in NTU, um, I always answer it kind of differs from hall to hall because each hall has their own culture, and this is the same for NUS as well. So let me just explain NTU's one first. So for NTU, there are some halls that are very um, orientated in sports, such as Hall Six, like they kind of hang like this banner outside their hall saying like home of the champions I think because they won a lot of like inter sport games and then we have like hall 8 and 16 which are very competitive in the dance because they're always the champions for the HOCC they always take turns to be the champions and we have cheerleading also like hall 1 and hall 10 I think they were pretty good in cheerleading and like each hall just kind of have their own culture whether it's like a very laid back culture or competitive culture a very nurturing culture and stuff like that for NUS, especially for the RCs, it's very evident because the RCs, you actually have to take modules in your curriculum. So each RC actually offers their own set of modules. For example, Tembusu College. Tembusu College kind of offers more philosophical kind of modules. Uh, Richfield kind of offers a bit more sustainability, um, environmental 
conscious kind of modules because they're very environment they're very environmentally conscious. So for the RCs, it's very obvious that, that they all have very different cultures and for the halls as well. All right, so last section is admission. So for into it's quite simple. You actually just have to rank the choices that whether you want a double non-aircon room, a double aircon room, um, a single non-aircon room, or a single aircon room. And so you rank it. And one thing about NTU is that you can't choose the hall that you want. So if you choose maybe double non-aircon room, they're just going to allocate you within one of the halls that has no aircon. Another thing is that if you apply for a double room, you can actually put in the name of a friend you want to stay with. So it can be a freshie or a senior. So when applying for halls in NUS, uh, I saw the form you actually have to put in the achievement, so your past CCA records and stuff like that. Uh, apparently it's the criteria that consider whether for you to go in the hall or not. And you, after that, you rank the top 3 halls that you want. For RCUs in NUS, there actually is a joint residential college application system and you actually get to choose your room preference, so your single double room. Uh, floor gender preference because apparently some floors are mixed, so if you're not comfortable staying with um, you know, the opposite gender, you can choose a single gender floor and the rank the RCUs you want of course. All right. That was a really lengthy video and I finally come to the end of this video. I hope that this simple breakdown has been helpful for all of you out there. Uh, please forgive me if anything is wrong. I've really tried my best to do as much research as I can and I'm sorry that I couldn't provide a lot on the NUS site because I'm not from NUS and I didn't want to you know, try to explain something that I'm not very well versed in. I just wanted to say all the best to all of you out there who are applying for universities or applying for halls and I hope that you get into the one you want. And of course, thank you so much for watching. Bye!